version was great. So it's good to see you. We're going to talk about prayer today. You guys are super mellow. This is like the quietest. I mean, the wedding was, uh, the funeral I did a few weeks ago was more exciting than this. So, um, <laughs> okay, thank you. I will give up on that one. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about prayer and we're going to do a simple prayer guide. There's a lot of different ways to pray and I'll mention a couple of them, but today we're going to talk about Acts, which is one of my favorite ways to pray, A-C-T-S, and we're going to give you just a simple guide, something to walk through, real practical. You can do it anywhere. And, uh, but have you ever been distracted? How many have ever been distracted by something small? So I don't know if you remember being in school. Back in the old days, they had fluorescent lights and ballasts. And inevitably, wherever I sat in a classroom, there was above me this noise. So I'll never forget at Westminster, where we were both at, um, which I used to spell wrong a lot because you minister, it's not minister. Anyway, um, we were in class and we had exams. And so exams is the worst time because that's when people are the quietest. So we're, we're taking these exams and the light above me is humming. And of course, I finish my exam and I've got like a half hour left and the light is buzzing. And the teacher's walking around the room and so... As the teacher's walking around the room, I thought, you know what? If I hum the exact pitch of that thing, they won't know it. And so that's what I did. I did, mm. Now let me show you something else I did because I'm not a dummy. You can tell somebody's humming if their mouth is closed. Mm. Mm. So here's what's funny. The teacher started coming over towards me, wondering where that noise was coming from, because of course now the ballast is 400 decibels instead of one, because I have amplified it. Well, as he comes over to me, one of my good friends is sitting about three rows over in the room in the same row, and as he comes over to me, I stop, and my friend automatically starts. <laughs> so he comes to me and he hears, and I stop, and so he's looking, and my friend, so he walks over there, and of course, when he gets over there, you know what I do. <laughs> the teacher's walking around the room. Because, and listen, let me tell you why I did it. Because it was driving me crazy. Have you ever had just some little, little thing just driving you crazy? And here's the amazing thing about life. Let me tell you about life. Everything, anything can distract you from what matters. And so one of the keys for all of us is to recognize as humans, we con uh, constantly have selfish gravity. Even if you've been a Christian for a long time, this world is full of selfish and self-centered gravity, which is always pulling on you for you to be selfish and self-centered, to think you're the best driver, and you're not. You're not the best driver. I am. And so um, <laughs> that was true yesterday, maybe not today. Anyway, so no, so, but right, so we all think that what we see and what's important to us matters and the way we look at things matters. And the truth is, the world is always pulling with every little thing. Just like that hum in the light, there's a million other things. And so I want to give you just something you can do. Literally, you can do this prayer anywhere, anytime. Middle of the night, you wake up. And every once in a while, somebody will come to me and go, Pastor, i got to tell you something. Satan woke me up last night. I said, oh, tell me about that. They're like... Middle of the night, I just started worrying, and I knew it was Satan. Satan showed up in my room. I just knew it was Satan. So here's what I tell him. I say, listen, when you wake up in the middle of the night, if you really feel like you're under attack, then pray, because I can tell you, Satan doesn't want to wake you up to pray. And so spend time in prayer, and then if it really is Satan waking you up, guess what? He's going to let you sleep, right? Because the last thing he wants is you waking up and praying. So this is a prayer you can do, and we're going to talk about this connection to God in prayer and refocusing, because that's what prayer does too. It refocuses us, gets our minds and hearts off of ourselves. And so we're going to talk about this idea of adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and then I'm going to explain it, but it's called supplication. I've never been able to think of a better word than that, so we're just going to stick with that for today. So let's start with adoration, honoring God's greatness. So adoration is the idea... A good way to imagine adoration is the idea of, and I've never been there, so I could just imagine driving up to the, how many of you have ever been to the Grand Canyon? Some of you have been to the Grand Canyon? So adoration is the idea of, wow, 
wow. And if you've ever been on the beach uh, in the morning when the sun's coming up and the, the, the dolphins are out in the surf and the birds are flying over and you're just like, wow. Adoration is God. You are so awesome. You are amazing. God, you are so merciful. You're so gracious to me. And so listen to what it says here in 2 Corinthians 1.3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at this. The Father of compassion. And I love this one. And the God of all comfort. By the way, that's a great prayer to pray for somebody who is mourning or hurting. God, you're not only the God of compassion, you're the God of comfort. Would you give my friend comfort? Would you be with them? And we say, God, thank you that you are compassionate. You don't have to be compassionate to us. God doesn't have to care about us. You know, what's so unusual about Judaism and then from there Christianity is this idea that God cares. No other religion there God cares. There, you're, you've got to work yourself for God to even maybe accept you. Christianity is the opposite of that. God came to us. Why? Because he wanted a relationship with us. It's inverted from every other religion. It is because it's the true God. And why? Because he has compassion on us. And so have you ever said, God, thank you that you're so compassionate? God, thank you that you are the God of comfort. And by the way, sometimes that's a prayer you need. Lord, I need your comfort today. I, I need to know your compassion today. I'm, I'm hard. By the way, if you ever make a huge mistake, this is also a great verse. You ever, you ever remember something you did, right? You know, I tell the funny stories in church. I don't tell the other ones, right? But the other ones are the ones that wake me up at night, right? <gasps> oh, why would I remember that? Because my brain has an evil DJ, right? I heard some comedian talk about this. Has, has an evil DJ, and that evil DJ in the middle of the night says, what do you want to hear tonight? And I go, I want to hear the best hits, the best things I ever did. Nope. Going to play the worst, dumbest things you ever did. Put it on for him. There you are, dropping the cymbals on the stage in the middle of the concert. Hey, wake up. You know, oh man, right? And so the enemy reminds you of those things, and you say, God, thank you. That you are a God of compassion. You're the God of all comfort. Number uh, next. Hebrews 13, 15 says this. Through Jesus, therefore, let us, listen to this, continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. Why is it a sacrifice of praise? Because you don't always feel like it. You don't always want to do it. It's difficult. A sacrifice of praise. The fruit of lips that openly profess his name. God, thank you that even on my worst day, you're good. God, thank you that even today, when I feel like this, you still care about me and love me. Lord, I thank you after a day like this, <laughs> after the day you know I had, after what I said to that other driver in the left lane going 75 with a trailer, U-Haul right behind them, slowing down every time, all the time, holding up four lanes of traffic with a semi next to the... I'm sorry, I'm remembering... Right? Lord, thank you that even though you know my heart, even though you know the things I thought, you still love and care about me. Lord, thank you. Lord, I adore you. Number two, confession. Confession is surrendering my failures. Let me tell you what confession is like a little bit. I had this experience this week. Um, I don't know if you've been in your attic lately, but I've been in mine lately just for fun. Okay, not for fun. But anyway, so because our air conditioner broke. So I've been in the attic a lot, and I'm like, man, it is way too hot. It shouldn't be this hot up here. Something's not working right. And so I did what every genius does. I Googled what in the world is going on with the venting in my attic. And, I, and I've got vents on top. And vent. so, so as I looked it up, I realized that the type of vents I have have to be cleaned out. You're supposed to wash them out once in a while because they have little bitty holes all over the house. But if you don't wash them out, they all get clogged and nothing works and nothing flows. And so you take a hose and you wash it out and all the dirt comes flying down and you think, oh, I don't know, it's that dirty. I feel bad about that. The truth is, confession for us is that part of us that sometimes we don't even recognize the pride that snuck into our life. The selfishness, the self-centeredness, the lust, the greed that snuck in until we start to say, God, would you show me my heart? 
Lord, show me, like David said, any wayward way in me, any area of my life where I am not looking towards you and I'm looking towards my own selfish interests. And what begins to happen is God begins to point out those things. Why? So you can lay them at his feet. Listen to what it says here. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Listen, if you're pursuing your own selfishness and self-centeredness and whatever that is, it's really hard to listen to what God's saying to you when your head is down here. You're, you're focused on whatever this is. And the truth is we all get that way sometimes and confession is important and daily confession is important in order to renew that relationship with God, to make sure that our heart is, is focused on Him. Haven't you ever been just going down the road and all of a sudden you realized a, a hard attitude that you had or, or, or maybe where you were wrong and had to apologize to somebody or maybe later had to text somebody, hey, you know... I. I probably didn't come across the right way. Why? Because you spend time, and God does that, what? To keep you tender before him, and since the two commands are love God and love people, he also wants you to be sensitive and thoughtful towards others. And so the confession, by the way, let me give you a warning about confession, because this is a big mistake that a lot of new believers make, and I heard, learned this years ago from Peter Lord. Confession should only be as public as the offense. And so if you've wronged somebody, you should go to that person. However, for example, like, please don't come to me at the end of this sermon and go, Pastor, I've hated your guts for the last 10 years. I mean, unless you told me you hated my guts for 10 years, don't come and tell, right? Because you've never let me know that. So don't confess things that might make you feel better and you just hurt somebody else. AA talks about that. Sometimes making things right with somebody means that you have to make it right in your heart, but you can't actually fix it. There are times that you can't fix something. You can't do something. So you say, God, I lay that before you. I confess that to you. Listen to what it says in 1 John 1, 8 and 9. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But listen to the good news. If we confess, and that, by the way, confess here means agree with God. If we confess our sins, what? He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So the truth is we say to God, God, would you purify my heart? He's the one that's faithful. And you can even pray, God, when I'm not faithful, you are. Now, for the next four weeks, we're going to be doing a series on the basics. And we do a lot of series where we go through specific passages. And we go week after week. We go through, you know, 1 Corinthians. We go through Thessalonians. We go, in the, and I'm teaching on Acts right now. And so we just finished the book of Acts. And so we go through a whole book of the Bible. But sometimes in Scripture, it requires you to do topical studies and to look at different Scriptures to understand something. We wouldn't understand the Holy Spirit if it wasn't for this idea of being able to look through many different Scriptures and understand the Holy Spirit. The same is true about prayer and the other three habits we're going to talk about in the next few weeks because as we look at scripture we say what does the scripture say about this specific christian habit which is practiced by the early church and so as we talk about prayer that's why we're looking at these different verses one of the things about confession that we tend to do that i tend to do is sometimes i'll confess something to god and then later i confess it again and then later i'm like Guilt and shame, so I confess it again. And I almost feel like the Holy Spirit's like, um, as far as the East is from the West, what are, what are you talking about? Like God looks at us like, what are you talking about? I don't know if you've ever had a good friend like that, that you've apologized to. You go to them and say, I'm really sorry. I was really grumpy today. I hope you can forgive me. And they go, forgotten about. And then later you say, I just want you to know I'm sorry. I was really grumpy today. And they go, what are you talking about? And you're like, no, no, I was really grumpy. They're like, what are you talking about? You're like, no, 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 I was really grumpy. You're like, they're like, what are you talking about? Do you, I've forgotten. Oh, so sometimes we are busy reminding God instead of actually laying our sins at his feet and going, God, I need your forgiveness. Would you forgive me? Now, the truth is, if you've stolen something, if you've taken from somebody, if you've not paid somebody a debt, that you've got to make that right. Part of confession is making things right whenever possible. But you can also lay it at his feet. Say, God, you know, I know you forgive me. Number next, 
Romans 3, 21 to 24, what an awesome verse. But now, apart from the law, this is the good news, a righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ, what? To all who believe. There's no difference between Jew and Gentile. Why? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody, everybody except Jesus. All have sinned. If somebody tells you that somebody you know doesn't sin, you need to go, uh-huh. by the way, I had one guy in my life when I said to him, all have sinned. He said, I haven't. I didn't know what to do with that. But most of the time, I don't have to argue with people about that one. I've had people actually tell me, no, no, I'm a professional sinner. I'm really good. You should see me. I'm, I'm just amazing. Right. And so all have sinned. Most of us don't struggle with it. We're like, yeah. But then it says, here's the good news. And all are justified, listen to this next thing, freely by his grace. How? Through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Now, redemption's kind of a weird word unless you used to go to Publix 20 years and 30 years ago. Then you totally understand redemption. So you guys are going to have to look this up on Google, okay? Years ago, when you went to Publix, when you went to check out, And my parents would spend $40 billion, and they would hit the little button. All of a sudden, all these little S&H green stamps would shoot out of the machine. And with my family, they would just keep coming, just keep coming. We sometimes had two grocery carts, five kids. Both of my brothers are over six foot. I know, I don't know what happened. Anyway, so, right? And here was the awesome part. My dad said, if you will gather the bottles to return... That's also something we used to do. If you'll gather the bottles to return, the Pepsi bottles, then I will give you all of the S&H green stamps. Oh, my goodness. So what did I do? I took my little book. I licked the green stamps and I put them in the thing until I had all these books. And then I walked into the S&H green stamp store. You ready for this? To redeem those stamps. And get something cool, like a boombox. A boombox is kind of... It's okay. It's, it's bad. It's, I mean, I can hardly talk about anything anymore. I used to have a joke when I'd write on my hand, I'd say, that's my Palm Pilot. And now kids are like, it's the dumbest thing I ever heard. So redemption is the idea that what did Jesus do? Jesus paid for you to come out of the store. (laughs) You You were caught in sin and Jesus said, I'm redeeming them. I'm paying with my blood for them so that they can come home with me. That's what redemption is. And it says that Jesus is the one who justified us freely by our works. No. By all the stuff we do. No. By being the best Christian in the room. Thank God, no. By going to church a lot. Yes. No, no, no. Just the pastor says that. No, no, Right? No. Why? By his grace. God, I need your grace through the redemption that came through Christ Jesus. So confession makes us aware of what do we need to change? What needs to change? God, you've redeemed me. And by the way, there's that great verse that I love that we talked about a few weeks ago. It's his kindness that leads us to repentance. There's something in us, I think because we grew up with mean coaches, there's something in us that likes to be yelled at. There's something in us sometimes that likes guilt and shame. We feel like somehow that's a better motivation. By the way, it's faster. You can yell at people and they move quicker. But the best motivation is it's his kindness, the Bible says, that leads us to repentance. So it's understanding how good God is to us, and that's why we want to confess God, you've been so good to me, and yet I do this. Would you forgive me? Number three. Oh, by the way, this is the Back to the Basics. We don't have a slide for that. This is a Back to the Basics series. So we're going to talk about prayer, Bible study, fellowship, and stewardship. All right. Number three. Thanksgiving, counting my blessings. How many of you have ever been whitewater rafting? Anybody been whitewater rafting? When you go whitewater rafting, what's the first thing they make you do other than take a lesson on whitewater rafting? They make you put on that stinky, used life jacket. But if you go out of the... How many of you have ever fallen out of a boat while water rafting? 
My sister ended up under a boat in Colorado while water rafting. And she was glad she had a life jacket on. Because you know what the life jacket does? Even if you're pulled under, that life jacket's going to pull you up. Let me tell you something about Thanksgiving. Especially if you struggle with discouragement, if you struggle even with depression. Maybe you struggle with depression. Maybe you struggle feeling unworthy. Thanksgiving is that life jacket that God gives us. When we begin to say, God, thank you that you love me anyway. God, thank you that you care about me. God, thank you for all that you've done. So I'm, I'm going to give you some practical things, but let me read the verse first. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. We read this just a couple weeks ago. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Now listen to this. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So it's give thanks no matter what circumstance you're in. You ever get into something? You ever agree to do something you didn't really want to do, but you agreed to do it anyway, and then it was too late? Sure, I'll help you move. Oh, why did I do that? Right? Sure, I'll do this. Oh, no. Right? So give thanks in all circumstances. So you're in a circumstance. So let me give you two things that I love to do. First is take a prayer walk. When you're really feeling overwhelmed, stressed, like you almost feel like the water is pulling you down, and everybody's had a day like that, I want to encourage you, just take a walk. And as you're walking, just look around and give God thanks for what you see. Now, I know that sounds weird, but it, and it's, this is wonderful for ADD people. Because you just look around and you say, God, thank you for birds. And thanks for trees. Thanks for power lines. Right? Thank you for power. To our, you know, whatever you see, Lord, thanks for paved roads. I've been on dirt roads before. Those are no fun. Lord, thank you for cars. Lord, thank you for green grass. Lord, thank you for being able to see colors. You know, and you just look around and take time. And here's the thing. As you do that, I promise you, as you begin to give thanks, even if at first it's a sacrifice, right? God will begin to change your heart and you'll begin to feel the buoy of thanksgiving that will pull you above the water. By the way, the, uh, uh, Daily Bread today, as I read the Daily Bread this morning for today, guess what it's about? Thanksgiving. They've actually found that people who learn to give thanks sleep better than other people. And so that's the thing. So give thanks. God did that on purpose. That wasn't an accident. Now, another thing that you can do, maybe you, maybe you can't be outside. Maybe you're in your cubicle and you're having a rough day at work, okay? Or you're stuck somewhere. Use the alphabet. Alphabet's a great way to give thanks. And I do that two ways. Number one, I, I give God thanks for different things using the alphabet. I've given thanks for apples a lot, by the way, and aardvarks, right? But you can also give thanks for people. It's a little hard when you get to the X's unless you grew up in Miami like I did. It's a few Xavier's, right? <laughs> so, so, but the truth is, you go, go through the alphabet and thank God for different people in your life. It is amazing how that life jacket, you can almost feel God lifting you as you spend time thanking him for what you've been given or who he has put in your life. In Ephesians 5, 19 and 20, here's what it says. Sing and make music, listen, from your heart. That's good news for some of you, Bill. That's really good news for you, that it's the song from the heart, not from the vocal cords, right? And that's bad news for some of us that maybe have a good voice, but we're thinking of something else while we're singing these songs. You ever do that? Worst thing for a pastor is to go to a conference. Because we sit in a conference and we're thinking, oh, that'd be nice. We should do that. Oh, we should do that. And you're, you're trying to sing songs of worship, but you're thinking, oh, it's a, we got to work on that, you know. And you're thinking of different things to do. And we all tend to do that. We, we get busy with praise. So we have to turn our hearts and say, make music from your heart to the Lord. And then it says, always giving thanks to God the Father. Now, we did the in, and now it says, for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we talked about this in our men's group this week, which I thought was awesome. So we're in something and then for everything. But Eric, you don't understand. This horrible thing happened to me. How can I be thankful for that? Sometimes the only thing I can say is, God, I don't know how you're going to work that out for the good. But I know you will. God, you've taken the biggest mistakes I've ever made and worked them out for the good. 
Even that person that hurt me, Lord, you've used that for me to be able to be a blessing. So I'm going to give you thanks, not just in, but for, for terrible things sometimes. And so you say, God, I'm giving you thanks for this. I, I, I don't feel like giving thanks, but God, I'm going to thank you. Why? Because not because of what happened, but I know you're going to work it out. God, I know you're going to use this in some way. By the way, God never, listen, listen, God never wastes a hurt in your life. If there's pain and hurt in your life, God will use that very thing for you to be a blessing to somebody else. He never wastes a hurt. Number four, supplication. Supplication is simply asking for yourself and others. Now, here's the thing. I always, and I've learned this over the years, I always like to end my prayer time praying for other people. You know why? Because when I pray for myself, I become selfish even in that. I am that selfish. So I pray for myself, and then I pray for others. And by the way, what happens when you begin to pray for others? You realize your problems aren't so big. Because we all have a friend that we're like, thank God I'm not dealing with what they're dealing with. Don't you? Do you have one of those friends? Right? And so almost all of us have somebody that we're like, Lord, would you help them right now? Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving... Present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will do what? Will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So you take everything and you lay it at his feet. By the way, a great prayer journal, if you want to go up to Park Avenue in Titusville, they have something called the 2959. You can't get it online. I think I saw one online. They wanted 100 bucks or some crazy, some crazy person selling it. But anyway, you can go up to Park Avenue in Titusville. They still sell the 2959. It's just a journal that kind of walks you through daily prayer. Maybe for you, you just get a three-ring binder and you start writing a few of your friends' names in it. Um, Rodney, uh, who's now a pastor down south that used to work here, he carries around a three-by-five card, and he's just got some different prayers. And every once in a while, I'll see him pull that out and go, what did you say? And he'll write it on his card. And he just pulls that out. Why? To pray for other people. So you pray for your own needs, and you pray for others. But when you present it to God, can I tell you what you do? Present, you give somebody a present. Don't take it back. Right? And so Peter Lord's wife used to say, we present it to God, or excuse me, we present it to God, and then we turn our hands over so that we don't pick it back up. So if you find yourself picking it back up, you say, God, I presented that to you. In James 5, 16, it says this, therefore, this is what I talked to the kids about, confess your sins to each other, pray for each other, why? So you may be healed. And so when you're meeting with people sometimes, one of the best things you can say to a good friend, listen, listen, make, start to make this a habit. How can I pray for you? Just while you're talking sometimes, say, is there some way I can pray for you? A lot of your friends will be like, what? But what a wonderful thing. I, I promise you, if you say to your friends, how can I pray for you? It will change them. And you begin praying for them. You start praying for them. And it says the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And let me give you the good news about this. Do you know why Christians are righteous? Not because of their works but because of what Jesus did. Remember, he redeemed us. And so when you're a Christian, you are the prayer of a righteous person. Not because you're good enough or smart enough or have it together enough. You are that person. One of the things that happens when you're praying is you have to take time to get still. And not too long ago, I was praying about a very specific thing. And I said, God, I, I need to know what you want me to do. I, I'm willing to lay this down. I'm willing whatever you want me to do. And I felt like God said, no, I want you to keep fighting. I want you to keep walking through that. You're supposed to be here. I want you to keep walking through that. And so there's times where God will give you the confidence and give you an impression from him. Not out loud. It's not like Noah built an ark. But a lot of times he'll give you an impression. And that impression always lines up with his word. It always is loving towards people. <laughs> if you find yourself pressured and hurting and looking to attack somebody, that's not God. But if you find yourself humble, you find yourself subservient, you find yourself saying, God, I need you. Those are the words that come from God. Prayer is the connection to God that refocuses us on what matters. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, that's the first step to a great prayer life is to be able to know him. He's already redeemed you 
And the Bible says when you surrender your life to him, what does he do? He redeems you. Why? By his grace. So if you're here today and you want to be redeemed by God's grace, I'd love to talk to you after the service about what it means to be a Christian. If you're here today as a Christian and the truth is your prayer life has been very non-existent, just write ACTS a couple places where you'll happen to see it. Maybe you put it in your daily phone reminders where it just says ACTS so you know what that means, so you remember to take time to pray. I promise if you do that, God will bless your life. You'll find your, your walk with God closer. You'll find your relationship with others better. God can do that. Let's close in prayer today. Father, thank you for this time today. Thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for the honor of being able to pray and to know you. Lord, I thank you that prayer is not earned, but it's given because of your grace. We can have a relationship with you. Lord, I pray for that one today that's struggling, whether it's with confession or thanksgiving right now or one of these other parts of prayer, that Father, today, you, the God of all comfort, the God of all mercy, would give them your strength today. Lord, thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen.